You're listening to Until They Sleep, a podcast where two parents finally get to sit down and discuss all the different things that run through their heads every day because their four kids are finally asleep. Thanks for listening. Today, today, we will be talking about Star Wars <laughs> and how I killed my master. And how I manipulated a little boy from a planet named Dathomir. I kind of like made him a slave and made him my apprentice, but not really. He was like a hidden assassin. And you having fun there? Um. Does that hurt your voice? No. Now do a Darth Maul. I haven't done that in a while. <clears throat> I have to like I have to rest my voice. I don't remember it. Um I can see him in my mind's eye. Can he be Welcome into Until They Sleep. I'm Daniel, joined by my wife Chantel and our special guest, Corvin. Hello everyone. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Today we're talking to Corvin, and uh, we have a couple questions for him. Well, we're going to be talking about, you know, uh, well, he's a high schooler. He's currently playing sports, and um, and just, you know, instead of calling kid number one now, uh, we're calling on Corvin. So you guys know we're finally get to have our interview with the last one. So what do you got for us? There's a couple things I wanted to clarify about our last episode because we were talking about you know charter schools and stuff like that but i guess i'll leave that to the end okay we can just jump into questions for our high schooler um some of it does relate to the whole charter system versus public system just kind of want to understand what do you like about the school you're in now that you've chosen to stay in versus the other schools maybe based on things you hear from other people we know it's not perfect, and we want your take as someone who's attending that school. <laughs> I think he already got lost. He's like, yeah. wait, what? Huh? <laughs> yeah, the laugh says it all. Uh, go ahead. You, you have an answer? Yeah, I do. Um, so public school, I, you definitely have a lot more freedom. Yeah. Like, they really don't care about what you do. You can be on your phone the entire class. This is from what I experienced. Um kids would just pull out their phones be on there the entire time class pay a little bit of attention but um like the school i go to it's it's more strict is uh dress code you have to follow you kind of gotta do what other people say but i think but uh, is it like evil like no it's not evil like you know the the scary movies where you get whipped no and <laughs> it's, uh, it's just more discipline and respect right yeah it's more it's yeah it's a lot more respect um the teachers are really fun uh, that's that's something I like about it more. Um, I think it's kind of the only reason why I like it. Do you, now are they more fun, or is it that they act like they care, or what? What makes it? What makes the education from those teachers better? I feel like they really try to connect with the students. Okay. So it's more of a like uh, interaction with the teachers, yeah. right? Do you think that's because? It's smaller classes. Were there more kids in the classes when you were at the other school? Uh, yes. Like, uh, there was lots of kids. Like, I think up to, like, 30, maybe 40. Okay. And But, like, here it's, like, 20 to 30. Mm-hmm. So, it's smaller classes. So, teachers uh, have more time to, like, interact with the kids. And they take individual time to get to know you. Like, what you like, what you don't like. Uh, they try to, like, be kind of friends Mm-hmm. But like just just to have um, have a meaningful conversation with them. Okay, but I know you don't love all your classes. Now, can you tell us what what's the disconnect maybe for some of those classes? They don't try to connect with the, with the students. Like they they're very um, distant. Okay. Like they just give you a handbook and tell you to read it. They teach you the material but they don't try to make it interesting or fun. I've only had one teacher like that so far. Um, My science teacher, he was the only one that didn't uh, 
try to connect with the students. He just gave you a handbook, told you the equation, and said solve it. You know, try to get to know so, everyone. So you would say more kind of like have you seen in movies, like a college professor who's yeah. just there, he's doing his job, and that's and expects you to do your job, and that's it. I'm not here to be your friend. Yeah. This is what the job is. Get it done. Yeah. And that's it. Okay. So he'd be a great college professor. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I think he was for a while. Oh, well, that would explain. Yeah, that explains it. Yeah. yeah. So, and then the school, from what I understand, is they're pretty much getting you ready for, you know, if you decide to go college, to college or university, university mm-hmm. then you kind of already don't feel weird once you get there. You're like, oh, yeah, this reminds me of that one science teacher. Mm-hmm. You know, so. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, uh, oh, I go was going to say, that, now, do you have any feedback from other kids because i know you've told me that there's been kids who've gone to other schools and come back now based on the information those kids have given you why did they come back to the school you're in if you remember because i know it's been a minute but and you're going to be a junior this year so what what do you recall is the reason because and i know you have friends in other schools is there anything they ever complain about or not complaining, just they just tell you what it's like. Um, for the most part, it's about the same. I mean, I think from what I remember is there's definitely a lot more violence in public schools. Okay, and now, is that from what you you hear that? Yeah, I hear I hear that some of my uh, some of the kids who've gone to public schools and come either like directly back or a while later came back. Uh, they said the main reason they came back was because of the violence, and their parents didn't like the amount of violence or drugs that mm-hmm. were on the on the school campus, and so they just came back. I would say that's the one and main difference. The main difference. Okay. Now, uh, when you went to that other high school, the public high school, uh, can you explain to me why you came back with your <sighs> so quickly? <laughs> very well adapted (laughs) it's just a joke it's just a joke Uh, i know you weren't there for very long but it seemed like you adapted very quickly i'm a a quick learner (laughs) you're a chameleon yeah (laughs) just learn to blend so i wanted to talk to you more like uh so recently just this past week you had a scrimmage with the high school the public high school that you you went to right so you're currently practicing um the the art of the american football and um, it was a thing that I had asked you that uh, at least to give me one year uh, because I think that there are some lessons that could be learned by playing a team sport. And uh, just as your father, knowing how what kind of a kid you are and how hands-on you are and everything, I always thought that it would be something that you would enjoy. So first thing is, and you can feel, please be honest, uh, do you hate the fact that I made you go out for the football team? No. Has it been a fun experience so far? Yes. Have you enjoyed it? Yes. Did, was I right then? That was something that, in the long run? Uh, I, I find it very uh, fun. It's fun. I, my favorite part is probably the hitting people. Right. Effect, and breaking people's ankles. Uh, <laughs> it is It is a camaraderie sport, and I have become closer because I'm a very distant kid. Yeah, you're very shy, yeah. I'm a very quiet, distant, shy kid. Um, and football kind of helped me get closer to all the people. Slowly, you're starting to make yeah. some friendships, right? Yeah. Um, so on that note, uh, what aside from when you say breaking people's uh, ankles, right? Because like, cause, um, you've been out there and, and you took a couple of people when you filled in for the receivers. Um what do you think is your handicap so far from football? Is it the fact that you're still learning and trying to understand uh, how the positions work or or the yeah the I, the job position, the reading, the 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 tackling, the physicality or the stamina that you weren't expecting that, you know, the workouts, the weightlifting is there something that that you feel that it's your weakness that you need to work more on? I think my speed is probably my weakness, mm. my speed, and um, knowing the plays. I'm pretty good at reading the field, right? Um, but the plays, they're new to me. Footwork, it's not too new, but uh, it's a workout. It's a, it's a good workout. I'm not really used to it. I haven't been in sports for a while, so a team sport. A, a team sport, yeah. Like that. Uh, you were doing into 
you know individual sports. so yeah. so out of all the sports that you liked uh where would you rank football so far that uh, all the sports that you tried right because you've done lacrosse you've done hockey you've done now football you've done jujitsu you've done taekwondo uh, done fencing fencing archery stuff like that uh did we say hockey yeah yeah okay out of those, like, what are your, what are your favorite? Give me your top three out of everything that you tried out so far. That's pretty hard. I mean, hmm. I'm trying to think. I like individual sports. Um, I like them a lot. I would say for my third sport, I'd have to put maybe fencing. Okay. I was pretty good at it. Um. I found it very fun, entertaining. It was quick. I liked it. Um, for my second sport, I'd put football. Okay. And then first, probably lacrosse. Oh, wow. Okay, I thought you were going to say jiu-jitsu. <laughs> Are you intimidated about, you know, those big guys in football, like the tackling when it comes to that? Is it? Is it? No. No, yeah, you're not scared yet? I see them, and I think jiu-jitsu, because uh, I've gone against some big guys right when training or in sparring do you think that jiu-jitsu kind of so jiu-jitsu was beneficial when it came to uh other sports then all right yeah. doing other sports that give, give you like a different point of view like a different mental state mm -hmm. no so um you said something funny that I, I was like you said you were practicing tackling and your body went automatically to yeah to rapping <laughs> yeah we were we were practicing jujitsu rap yeah we did a uh, tackling drills the other day and we did gator rolls and for some odd reason my jujitsu skills kicked in and in jujitsu the moment you tackle someone you gotta wrap your legs around them <laughs> so that they don't escape <laughs> and when i tackled them i when i tackled them i uh i wrapped my legs around them and it, I didn't mean to do it. It was just like reflexes and all that. But uh, I looked weird doing it, and everyone's like so confused why I wrapped my legs around it. Um, but yeah, <laughs> it's just instant. Did you explain it or no? You just no, stay quiet. I didn't. So, uh, so I was going where I'm going with it now is is um, you went to this one school and there were moments when you contemplated going back because of sports, right? Because you wanted to play lacrosse and, and maybe like you were talking about football because you see that they have a big stadium and everything. And now you're in the school um, where it's a very small football program, right? It's very small. We have about 20 kids on our team. Right now, yeah. counted Carol. 30 the other day on your roster. On our roster, but only 20 ever show up to practice. Yeah, 20, yeah, 20, 20, 20 to 24, yeah. it's been the average. Um, there's been some kids recently that just showed up this week. Like I've seen two, three new faces. I believe yeah. one of them is a transfer. Yeah, he's a transfer from a different high school. And so he's coming because the rumor is that he doesn't get a chance to play, right? Like he, yeah. he's there's football program so big, so now he's coming to a smaller school where he might have a chance to play. Mm -hmm. Like, how what does that do to you guys? Like in, in in your team, how do you guys feel about welcoming somebody like that? We're very open about it. I mean, we are a small school, um, so any new player that we can get, we're very excited about it. We're very open to it. Uh, we treat him like family. He, right. The new kid, he's already family. He's already been here for three days. Yeah. And he's he fits in well. Well, that's really that's really nice of you guys to be like that. And I guess you're kind of happy too because it gives you guys a breather, right? Because you guys play a lot of yeah. Ironman football, being such a small team, you had to play offense and defense. Uh, so you just had the scrimmage with your your old school, right? And when you looked, when I looked at that sideline, I was amazed at how many kids they have in that team. Like I'm pretty sure they're gonna cut a lot of guys, like half the people that were on that field. But I also noticed they were a little bit dirty, right? Yeah, they played dirty. Yeah, they played a little bit dirty. And then, but by the end of it, you also had a tournament this past weekend. And you guys met with them in the championship game, right? Mm -hmm. You guys had like an elimination and everything. And uh, why don't you tell us about that experience of having to face them twice, realizing that, you know, what a difference between schools are, or a football team. The first time we went against them, it was a... Um, it was a big surprise. They were very aggressive, very dirty playing, fast, um, and we didn't really know what to expect. Um, 
so we, we lost that one, but then the second time we came across them, we, you know, we, we went against them, so we know some of their plays, we know how fast they are, we know how aggressive they are. So we were more prepared physically, mentally, uh, ready for their plays, for their aggression. Um, and it was it was a close game on this past weekend. I think we lost by two points. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it was yeah really, I wouldn't really know. Really close. I don't because know. You guys, you guys scrimmaged against. Uh, it was a total of five schools. Yeah, so there was a lot of local school, high schools that were going to do this program. They were expecting a lot of heat. So obviously, uh, as it got closer, some started canceling, and then the day of, two more canceled. So it was enough just to get going. Uh, ended up being a nice weather day. Yeah. Like it was sunny, but mm-hmm. still there was a nice breeze. So that made it awesome. Yeah, it was um, originally eleven schools. That were supposed to be there. Yeah, 12, 12 with, with his school. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. So the coaches are, like, very understanding, yeah. right? They're very, coaches. like, they're, they're kind of, like, extended parents. Yeah, they're extended parents. And then you also have, what, a nurse out there all the time, too, right? Yeah, or a doctor a or a nurse? She's called a trainer. Oh, yeah. Our trainer, she's always out there. She takes care of you. Um, make sure you're healthy to play. Uh, if you have any injuries, they will take you out. No questions asked. If you uh, don't listen to them, that's up to you. I made the mistake of not listening to my trainer, and uh, my sprained ankle still hurts. Uh, that was about a month ago. Mm-hmm. I didn't take the proper time to heal it, and um, that was my choice. So listen to the trainers. They know what they're doing. Did you feel intimidated when you saw the other school's team, like how many there were? <laughs> nope. No? You guys Mm-mm. were good? I was good. You were good. <laughs> I don't know about the other guys. Well, we heard on the... On, I didn't get to see this, um, but the dads were telling me that you got injured or you got crushed. Pancake. Yeah. Pancake on yeah, the last game. And you guys aren't even in pads yet. It's no. just a scrimmage. Uh, but you're telling me that that's not what happened. But the dads say that is what happened. I guess it's just I going think... through it versus seeing it. So... Yeah. I didn't feel like I got pancake. Did I get pancake? <laughs> In my eyes, you did. So here's here's our thing, right? So um, you got your teammates and everything, and we had a, a, a incident a couple of weeks ago where we were at a scrimmage. You guys were at a scrimmage, and you know we were there as parents, being supportive. Mm-hmm. And um, there was a play where where it didn't go your way, right? There was a play mm-hmm. that didn't go that well. You were playing on defense, and uh, instead of like most dads that make excuses for their kids that, oh, you know, he, he slipped or, uh, oh, he twisted his ankle or, oh, he, that guy was offsides or whatever, I automatically started uh, haggling you, right? I started, I was like, oh, somebody called the fire department. Somebody just got smoked or somebody called 911. You know, we got somebody with third degree. <laughs> or I started calling you Anakin or <laughs> I can still see what you're facing. You're like all bothered by it. So, I started being you. the type of dad, right? <laughs> you were that me, you. yeah, me. <laughs> I was being me, you know, dropping a little, a little shit talking, you know, giving you a little hard time, being a man, right? Like, like, um, tough love, tough yeah, love, right? Tough love. And uh, you were just kind of like shaking your head, whatever, and you went back and you kept on playing. Uh, but then I heard the story that the following day. Uh, I guess everybody was apologizing to you about me giving you a hard time. Feeling bad, not no, apologizing. They were, like, they were like, Corvin, what was your dad saying? And I'm like, he was like, hey, your dad let you have it yesterday, <laughs> didn't he? I'm like, yeah, he did. And they're like, bro, I kind of feel bad for you. I'm like, I'm fine. I'm so used to it. I really don't care. And they won't let me live it down because, what, Friday they mentioned it? Oh, we oh were, they did. They brought it up again. Yeah, we were cleaning, setting up for the next uh, scrimmage thing that was that happened this past. Is that weekend. when you guys were cleaning the bleachers? No, it was the day before. Something else. Oh, okay. Um, and they were like, "Hey, you gotta listen. Or I'll scream at you like your dad did." <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> "Who told I'm not, you that?" Um, uh, one of the seniors. Yeah. Um, and I'm like, "You're not gonna let me live that down, are you?" And they're like, "Nope." And so <laughs> I really like that senior. He ate my lasagna. 
Yeah. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> he's a big guy. Yeah. He's kind. So then, <laughs> so then I have I have scarred you for the rest of the season, right? They, I mean, they might just be picking at you. I think you scarred them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they better get ready for the season. I'm going to start scarring them for reals. Oh, well, it's like those moms that are going to be like, don't talk to my baby like that. Right, yeah. So then most likely most of your teammates are always kind of like the attaboys from their parents. Oh, it's okay. Attaboy. You're all right. Do you want me to be more like that, Dad? No. You want me to stay quiet and not say anything? Please don't. <laughs> I mean, you could stay quiet and just rip him a new one when you see him. No. Oh, please embarrass me in front of everyone. <laughs> Why? So we're like, poor Recito, he's abused. I know. Why do you want that? He has the worst I, father in the tell world. Tell me, as a mother, I'd like to understand no. why you want that. No, because then I feel like it just gives other people. They're like, oh, he's just verbally like abused, abused. Like they, <laughs> they can think that I'm that, like I'm verbally abused. But then they go on the field. Like if we're in another game, right. like when the season starts, and, and then, it happens to them. And yeah, and it happens to them, and they're not used to it or whatever. Or they try hackling at me on the field. They're gonna be like, "Why is this kid not caring?" And then dad goes, and he's like, "Oh, that's probably why." Right. They're gonna be like, "Oh, I can't break the, I can't get in this, into this kid's head, because his he's dad, used to work. he's used to it. Right, right. Like his his dad or his parents or whoever, they they uh they've already gotten in his head, so he's used to it. He doesn't care." whatever so they they I can't mean, get in my head okay well that's a good way of thinking of it because i mean yeah yeah that's yeah he's building yeah, a callus he's, he's building yeah yeah that's right you're a callus he's, he's getting that that the thick, thick skin that yeah. you're always wanting him to have right yeah a little yeah. rough neck wait going on like mm, nah you can't hurt me your words don't hurt me Right. I'd be like, you're, they like just your, feel me. Like your oldest sister, right? When she said she went to boot camp and she was like, I hurt worse from my dad. Yeah. Yeah, I remember when she said that. You know, I was like, that tough love. But you guys know I love you, right? Mm-hmm. You know, it's just it's just a little, little I don't know, uh, competitive nature. Like, I laugh. I was hearing some parents talking about, like, Mamba mentality. Here, and But then i'm like uh if i can't talk to my son like that on a scrimmage which is kind of mamba mentality of that tough love of like get over it get up like and do it again and keep practicing and do the work and do the grind and you know like no nobody else can put you down by yourself um so then the, the fact that you're like yeah no that's fine like that's my dad i already know that he's gonna you know let me know where i went wrong and i'll make sure that i don't make that mistake again or but you know it's like move on on to the next thing right so so yeah but if i i, I uh if i embarrass you in front of your teammates and uh wow well, i just want you to know that i apologize for nothing no it's fine <laughs> i knew it was gonna happen when i made that play <laughs> he was waiting for a different haggle from you the other day that I don't think he's brought back up when I accidentally went off sides. Oh, yeah. You no. didn't haggle him about that, but you haggled him about something Oh, well, else. I think I, I, thought, I thought you would have understood why I left. Oh, that I knew it. I knew it. I mean, that that's, was like that's what i thought you are so you full of it that is not yeah. why you i didn't care didn't to say i was they like were already, I'm, I'm over this no don't listen to your dad that, that is, is not already, why he so. left they literally left after the end of the game he did not leave before that I saw people still running plays when I left. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> That's not no, factual. No, we were, yeah, we were like, uh, when that happened, I was like, oh my goodness. He's like three yards in front of the ball. And then you kind of move back. It's like, okay, he's about half a yard in front of the ball. He's offside. So like, is nobody going to say anything in the team? And I was like, the fact that they let you do that. But then, you know, I mean, at least they didn't throw it to you on that on that play, right? They went, yeah. they went the opposite way. But but you were wide open, too, on that one. Oh, I'm man. I was wide open. But I can't catch. No, you're doing fine. I mean, I've seen you catch a touchdown. I've seen you catch a couple of balls. You're doing fine. You're still learning. You know, like we said, it's, it's something new to you. And you seem to be picking it up pretty fast and learning. Uh, so we'll, we'll go from there. Do you think that by you learning all this uh when it comes to your brother's turn you're gonna be hard on him or are you gonna be a loving and caring kind of personal trainer for him to help him succeed it depends on how seriously he takes it right 
That's a that's a good answer. That's how seriously he takes it. Yeah, because you don't want to be wasting your time with somebody that you know it's not going to try hard, right? That's good. That's good. Um, so out of the work that you've been doing this summer uh, with football and waking up early and doing two days and three days and all days, um, what is one of the things that you're taking away from it? Like, especially because you're not home. Like you're, we're not driving you every day like you're staying with someone that lives closer to the school um so how how is that all affecting you what is that, what is what is going through your head honestly nothing <laughs> <laughs> no you haven't learned the lesson of uh you know pr like proper planning and oh, no. uh, learning yeah. to manage your time and learning how to you know Minus feed yourself eating. hydrate yourself yeah. Uh, have you learned uh, the essentials about, you know, the hard work does lead to success because, like, you've always been the kid that's been in shape, right? You're, you, you're cut. But from where you were in the beginning of the season till now, like me as your father, I can see that you have more strength. I can see you stand up a little bit taller, a little bit more straight. I'm not telling you no more. Like, stop punching over. I can see that. Even the way that you're talking back, like the other day we were making, we were kind of having a conversation and the way that you answered, there was like, there was more confidence to your voice. Like you've always kind of had it at moments, but like there's something different about you. Like you're becoming more of a man. And I noticed that like your body's changing, like your, your, your shoulders are getting wider, you know, like you're, you seem to be getting, you're getting stronger. Like t today you gave me a hit and i was like whoa okay i was not expecting that and that's barely a really? touch yeah i, I was like you like never that. you never had that not even in jiu-jitsu when you used to try to take me down i mean there was some strength in there that i was like oh this kid's gonna be strong but now like i felt it i was like i was like wait wait like where did that come from that was barely a touch like i wasn't yeah, expecting I didn't, that i feel like i even touched you yeah no it was like i was for me it was noticeable right away i was like oh there's a big difference and so i, I guess like You've learned that, or you understand that hard work, you know, does pay off at the end. Does it make you feel better? Do you feel better as a person? Yeah, I feel more organized. More organized, more planning, yeah. scheduling. I know that I noticed that uh, you're always the first one to practice. Mm -hmm. I'm, like, what, what? Why do you do that? Because you push yourself even more and more and more to be there earlier. Like, talking about half hour to 45 minutes before practice starts. Yeah, practice starts at 7. I'm usually there at, like, 6. Yeah, even an hour, yeah. yeah. Well, how come? Why, why, what drives you to, to try to be the first one there? I just... I feel like it helps show my determination. Mm. Like, I hope the coaches, like, maybe notice. Like, oh, this kid really wants it. He's right. here like an hour early hoping to get maybe extra practice in. Hmm. But everyone always shows up like l either at 7 specifically or at 7.30. So I'm usually there for about an hour and a half, an hour waiting. But, but uh, that's also because you're not having breakfast. That is true. I, <laughs> so or, here's the mom part about it. Here's and the mom like, part. What? Well, because, you know, I... Hey. And this is something that your coach has told us. I, you're, you think you're getting fat. <laughs> the coach has told us, and he told you guys, that your meals and your hydration are of utmost importance, especially during the summer heat, right? And so I'm not there to feed you and make sure you're fed. You are on your own, basically. You know, you're with family, but it's not family that's going to baby you, right? These are... Yeah. These are people who will expect you to be adult enough to take care of yourself at this point. So you, uh, if, if I take you food and that food is still there when I pick you up at the end of the week or half eaten, I am definitely disappointed that you're not, that, that I'm, yeah, I am disappointed because that tells me that you're not feeding yourself the way you need to. And then of course my concern is, is that that's going to affect your healing, like your recovery, your ability to perform at your best. Anyway, that's just me. I don't know. Yeah, moms are just moms being mom, you know. Mom's always going to be protective over you. 
or over their kids. I mean, that's they, they worry about other things. You know, they're always concerned about, you know, are they eating enough? Are they hydrating enough? Oh, he's got a boo-boo. Make sure that you, you know, get some bandit for it. Or, and yeah, it's because I'm not, I'm not there with you to make sure it happens. Because if you were here and I was driving you every day, then, you know, you'd get breakfast every day. Mm-hmm. You'd get your shake every day. You'd, I'd make sure that that happened. And at the same time, there's, you know, conversations your dad and I have had where I shouldn't be doing those things for you. So you being away from us during this whole training period is a true test of you being able to survive, right? Because you've mm-hmm. only got basically this two years. You got two years and you can leave, right? You'll be yeah. graduated, right? And so... Most kids go off to college or they join the military or they find a job and they move away. So either way. My baby. <laughs> so I guess the way I've been trying to see this summer and you not being home during the week and being away and me trusting you with stuff and I'm doing my best not to check in with you every day because I know that in reality in the future you won't check in with me every day. So... For me, it's a test to see how well prepared you are. So, I'm well prepared, except for the food part. <laughs> now, and I think that's just an age thing, right? No, no. If he's hungry, he'll prepare his food. He don't know. I mean, it's a, it's a learning lesson. Everybody's but you different. were telling me that when you were in football, you ate all the time. You were hungry all the time, and he's not. Yeah, but we had like totally completely schedules, right? Uh, like between him and me. Did I mean, he have- he has it pretty hard too. I mean, he is getting up early to be there early and everything. Um, so I would think he'd be more hungry. Yeah, he's not. I don't think he's going to get to that point yet until um, they go with the full pads and they start tackling. And Which is tomorrow, actually. Yeah, well, and, you start, and then there's just the, your body's just going to be more like. I need I need fuel, you know, because you're working hard and now there's hits, now there's bruising, now there's you know, recuperation that your body's trying to heal itself. And that's gonna be a lot of sleep. It's gonna be yeah, that's gonna be a lot of uh feeding. Um so yeah. I mean right I, I'm surprised like yeah, you're right. He's been working hard and everything, but I think it's one of those it's it's already his body. So he's always kinda of been in shape. So his body's used to the intake. Because there's times when he doesn't need it, and there's times when he just He's a vacuum cleaner for everyone. You need that. You need that. You need like that. Once a day. Yeah, he, he does that every once in a while. So that, and that's his body saying, you know, I need fuel, and so that's when he gives his body the fuel, when he's trying to bully all of us out of our food, and um, and then there's those his times, sisters, yeah, and then there's those sisters. times when he's like, I'm not hungry. I'm not. I'm good. I'm I'm all right. And then you got mom over there. You gotta eat. You gotta eat. Um, and it's because we you know that there are times when you can eat nonstop. You know, you're like a huge garbage disposal. <laughs> and there's times when it's like uh, all of a sudden you become that that girl on the first date. Oh, I'll just have a salad because <laughs> I didn't want to eat in front of the guy. <laughs> uh, that does happen, yeah. <laughs> all right, man. Well, you know that's that's cool. Uh, I, I just I, I just yeah I just wanted to know like your point of view how you feel about the football how's it coming along um, it seems like you I thought you were gonna be more like oh, I feel late by the team I'm the quiet one um, a coach well, we is, haven't talked about that yes we have uh, about he's, him being the quiet one I know he said he's the quiet I, I am one still I'm still quiet uh huh but I'm being included more now are you you had told me that they. That there is a couple guys on the team who, from the get go, were like, "Hey, Corvin," yeah, and they gave, even gave you a nickname and everything. That they were supportive, and and I guess these are now the now we found out these are now the team captains, right? Yeah, the team captains. So, and that's the quality of a captain, right? Is to make sure that the team, everyone on the team, feels included. So, and then I I noticed at least in one event that the guys were trying to include you. And you said you didn't even hear them. I didn't. And so I I'm, I was concerned, <laughs> definitely, that you weren't being, including yourself. And when, I understand that you're very private. When you told me that they were calling for me, I was shocked because I've never really called for anything. Okay. Unless it's to do something, uh-huh. like an errand. Okay. So for them to call me to, like, 
play with them. Mm-hmm. It was it was weird. I didn't expect that. Do you think that's also because in school they're not your friends? Because a lot of them are well, hanging they wa- out. Well, they weren't his friends, but now no, all this football no, stuff has been going on after the school yeah, year. But yeah, but like uh, the freshmen that are now the sophomores, they already had their clique, you know, their freshman year. And the sophomores that are now juniors, there's only six of you, right? Like five or six juniors. Yeah, there's like five to six. But none of you were friends before. I mean, I hung up. We weren't like best friends. No, no, no. I'm just saying you were acquaintances. Yeah, we were acquaintances. Yeah, but there was no buddy. Yeah, but this is all before football. That's what I'm getting at. That doesn't matter. Like, you can, I think where you're going with it, and he won't know until the school year starts this year. Yeah. You know, because now they've had. Well, everybody's out there going to the pool, going to the movies, you know, hanging out or you're staying home and playing online or maybe calling each other, texting each other or just, yeah, like just doing their own thing Um, or going to, you know, family trips wherever they are, Europe or, you know, you had a couple of friends that go on trips like that's fancy. Yeah. Um, There's a difference. While these guys got to know each other, they were strangers and they spent the whole summer lifting weights, running. You know, getting screamed at, uh, doing scrimmages, getting bruised together, getting treated, getting iced, getting, you know, cleaning equipment together, cleaning stands, going on drives for scrimmages. Uh, you know, they got to spend the summer sweating and, and, and becoming a team or becoming bros or brothers or, or teammates, whatever you want to call it. And so that creates a little special bond between them. So now when the school year starts, you know, they're gonna while people are saying like oh well you know i went to the pool and i went out with this person and we hung out here and i went to tj or i went to acapulco yeah and then they're gonna be like what did you do i was like my man over there knows what i did i was like hey so what do we do i was like oh you mean you know be here since like school was in session for us the whole year because we were working out the whole year you know oh, the whole summer like watching corvin get yelled at by his dad <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Or whenever they say he's like, "Oh, somebody call nine one one. Where the Anakin?" They're like, oh. yeah, that's gonna be their inside joke. They already. That's yeah. that's what creates start screaming the, the that, that, that camaraderie. Yeah. Well, because I. Well, my point was just really that you know he's having to build these relationships versus coming into football having yeah that camaraderie because like a couple of the guys played last year, and on top of that, they all hung out. You know, mm-hmm. freshman year, and now they're they're still buds, and they're now sophomore year, and yeah. now like they're still said, doing football. But like he said, they're so welcoming, though. They've yeah. been they've been so, even to the guy that's only been there for a few days. They've been so welcoming because they already know that they're gonna have that bond. So that's that's great. a beauty and about we team appreciate sports. Appreciate that, you know, for for him to experience that. Right, that's what you wanted is for him to learn what the camaraderie was of being part of a team. Now how different is what he's going through compared to what you went through when you were in football back in the day? Like, did you feel that camaraderie and that acceptance right off the bat? Or did you have to, you had to work for it? I think we all had to work for it because first of all, there was a competition of first, you got to make the roster. So then you knew that there was, yeah. So you know that there was guys that, that uh, were there to try to take your roster spot and you might just get cut from the team. So okay. then there's more competition between one another. And there's that hate, that resentfulness, right? Like the whole, like, this guy's trying to take my spot. There's no way. I'm not touching his hand. Like, forget him, you know. There's people that look at it that way. But then there's people that are like, no, man. Like, I'll pick you up. You pick me up. You push me. That's how I looked at it. Everyone's like, okay. How? I think that was the difference, though, because I was always such a little athletic kid. And now I grew up at home, at home uh, where they made us compete against everything. Mm-hmm. So they made us competitive there. So in a way, when it came to me being competitive with other people, I was like, "No, nah, they they ain't, they ain't got nothing on me. I, I've I've had it rougher. Like I'm better than all of them. Like there's I you know I played sports on the street. You know yeah. like back we're, we're a different era. Yeah, crashing. I the never Cadillacs. got yeah. I never I never got picked last. Like maybe in the beginning I did, but later on they were like, "No, okay, you and me we're captains and we're big teams." Then when you're like, okay, when there's kids from other neighborhoods coming to play you. And you always end up being a captain, then you already know that, oh, I don't suck. I'm good. Mm-hmm. There's a reason why I don't. Yeah. And that's kids just, don't like me. We just right? grew up in a different era. So. Yeah, it's a different thing. So, yeah, that, and, that's and the difference. And what about the coaches? I feel bad for the coach because I know 
he seems to be like my type of coach, like kind of like I would be as a coach or the type of coach that I had growing up. And I can see that he holds back a lot because of some of the parents. I do feel that there's a lot of parents on the team that um, baby the kids or or, or all the just kids. A, this and it proved it when you know me making fun of him and giving him a hard time about him getting smoked in one play. Yeah, Alien that everybody, yeah, that everybody's like, oh man, like I feel bad for you. like, damn, your dad wrote you hard. And some parents on the sideline were like, oh my god, I can't believe he said that to his kid. Like the trauma is like he. I'm surprised he doesn't quit. Like right, instead of being positive reinforcement, because that, that's the difference. They they believe in positive reinforcement and 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 I'm not saying that I don't give him positive reinforcements because you heard me and you know it. I'm like, yeah, hey, you did good, buddy. Like, oh, you know, you just need to work on this one or whatever. Like, there's always room for improvement. You can't just keep on lying to your kids and say you're the best. I'm like, no, like, hey, you did good, but you could do better. you could do this or you can do that or oh, you did great. And I don't know if it's a culture thing too because, like. How many times haven't I told him that, oh, you're lucky your Uncle Juan wasn't there because he would have been writing you. He would have been making fun of you the whole time because of this or that. Or like, Well, like my other point on all that was, so there's, compared to the public school system, the coaches oh, yeah. for those bigger schools, you were over there, husband, talking about like, that's my type of coach. Oh, yeah, yeah, and yeah. And so you kids... How no. how do you guys when you're on the field you hear those coaches yelling at those kids in a way your coach doesn't necessarily yell at you guys? Oh, that's a great one. Yeah, how do you guys perceive some of the coaches you guys gone against when you hear how they treat their players compared to how your coach treats you guys? Or do you feel it's the same? It it's definitely different. Well, it's moments. <laughs> it ha- yeah, there's moments where coach is similar to them mm-hmm. but it, he really does uh try his best to not be like that because it's either the parents or his boss mm-hmm. like we're on the field practicing and he's always looking over his shoulder looking for the principal or um the vice principal he's mm-hmm. looking for them because he doesn't want to get fired like he's told us before he's like i want to scream at you guys i want to do this stuff i want to be the type of coach that i was to my kids but I can't because I'm going to get fired or some parents are going to go whine and complain. That, is it because oh, the kids go hard. whine and complain or is it the parents? Kids, parents, he doesn't know. Um, he just, he's just scared someone's going to say something. And that sucks, right? Because we've, we've seen kids that are just like little crybabies, little naggers on yeah. the sideline yeah. that are just, you know, nag, and, nag, and, nag. And, and it, now could he cut those kids? He should be able to cut them. Like, and that's the thing. I mean, is, but he's, but he's because their team cut. is so small. Yeah. Like he's already cut two players because they've been well. They were reckless. really bad. They were extremely they were, reckless. They didn't follow the rules, yes. and they were told not to do something. And there was curfews, and there was everything, so they violated. it. So of course, that's enough to get penalized. Just like when you have characters on a team who are not helping the team, and they're creating like uh, they're holding back the team. Then those are the times when sometimes you got to cut those players on the team. But I think sometimes when, like for the school being as small as it and the team being as small as it is, it's hard to make those cuts when you know you need a better player and there's no other option. Yeah. So uh, the only thing that I've taken from the team as me as a dad sitting on the sidelines is I know that my mouth has uh, pretty much alienated me with some of the people. Some I know the parents. Some of the parents. Are, I know that they're probably, I'm not so welcome or, or, um, I think when that day when I made my comments to you or I give you some advice, like, hey, come on, hustle, or like, hey, help the coach do this, or, you know, get rid of the eyes. Like, don't just sit there, like, come on, come on, baby. I think some of the parents are kind of like, oh, you know, it's it's weird for them. You know, it's like, oh, why is he being like that or, or whatever. But at the same time, like, I'm a dad. I play the sport. I coach and so there's times when I'm like, oh, that kid's not doing this fundamental mechanics. Or he has this, he's not concentrating on that. Who's working on him with this? It's like, what kind of route is this? It's like, are they not teaching them this? How come that person's not calling them? And some of the parents are probably, like, getting annoyed with it. Or they're like, oh, no, no, this. Like, no. Nope. Like, okay, hold on. And then later on, oh, yeah, you're right. You called that. It's like, yeah, exactly. But you, you, you've been talking to a couple of the dads, or at least one, I think, that was there with you. Like, oh, yeah, run this play and... He seemed to get you, right? As far as it came to how to play the sport and you know and all that. So yeah, and that's the and thing though. It, it's funny. Like 
I watch football, and there's a lot of times where I don't say anything. It's just like I'm watching it, whatever. Mm-hmm. And I find it funny that my son's playing it, and now I'm on the side, like, criticizing everything that they're doing wrong. I think because you have a passion for it. Yeah, and I kind of want them to succeed, right? Or I want, you know, I want, I want to give. It's like I told them, I wish I had a little knowledge, little knowledge, because I compared me to any other college coach or high school coach. It's nothing compared to what they have, right? Mm-hmm. But the little that I know that I have learned, I wish that I can give him that little bit of knowledge so that you know he can be that much stronger and an and, and important asset. He's just to the gotta team. want it. You just gotta want it, right? Because there's there's a you have some teammates that. I hear from their parents saying my kid is going to the gym every day or my kid is working out every day, even when they're not here. Some of the kids have personal trainers. Good for those parents that are able to provide that for their kids. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, so I think one of the kids even has like a professional ex-football coach, you know, that has retired who trains with them, you know, so like great for those families that can do that stuff. So that just means that those kids who can't, whose parents can't provide those things for them, they got to want it more. And that means they've got to work for it harder, figure out how, like when you used to play lacrosse, we were like, buddy, you need to be out there. We got to see that you want it, that you're out there practicing against the wall, hit that ball against the wall, catch it, whatever. You know, we need to see that you want it, right? The same thing with this, right? We got to see that you want it. That's how you show the passion for what you do. Like when you were in jiu-jitsu, you'd be practicing jiu-jitsu in the house on your siblings. I mean, I know it was fun to torture them as well, but <laughs> it's, you know, we, we saw that you wanted it, right? So, and I, I just, my point is that when we can't provide you all these extra perks, you know, opportunities, it's on you to prove that you want it. Yeah, but when you're talking about like those parents um, or the kids that are going doing the extra extra work and everything, you know, it's like you said, they got that drive, they want to do it, right? And they're, and they're also they're, planning they're, to to be professionals, follow, yeah, professional. yeah, to do everything. Mm-hmm. For our son, it's it's not he he's doing it because it's he wants to try the sport, right? Like mm-hmm. first it was it was recommended to him. Now he's enjoying it, mm-hmm. right? Uh, right? Am I right on that aspect? Mm-hmm. And you're having fun with it, and then you're learning something, so. If he's fortunate to, you know, get some attention or play or do anything, and it's the satisfaction. No girlfriends, though. You know, <laughs> it's the satisfaction <laughs> of. I played for one. It's like it's the satisfaction of like I played, I did this, I know what it's like, and then he becomes part of that club of, yeah, I play football too, you know, because I know because, what it's like. Yeah, I know what it's like. I I did the work. I know what it's like to. And then later on in life, again, it's like if I want this job, what are you willing to do? How hard are you willing to work for it? Just like you were willing to do it to make the yeah, team. You're willing to play. be there an hour early to wait. Yeah, exactly. So team. it's one of those things. That's for, so for him, it's not a, I need to make it to the NFL so that I can provide for my family. And, you know, my mom and my dad can have a house or mm-hmm. we, we can have food or clothes. Like there's people that think like that. Like yeah. this is our ticket to not be poor anymore. Yeah. You know, uh, fortunately, like so in the school, I don't think there's any kids that are going through that scenario. Uh, I don't, I don't for know. For my team, we have, I think, one person. He's going to go to college. He already has offers. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Our big lineman. Yeah. Okay. Yes, we're aware of who. Yeah. yeah. He, he has offers um for i think three colleges i don't know which ones though yeah and there's people that you know want to use it as a ticket to you know get to college because they probably can afford the college if it helps them yeah Mm -hmm. that's awesome i mean that was part of the thing when we were like when people found out you play lacrosse it's like oh yeah you can get to an ivy league school because only ivy league schools all play lacrosse and there's not a lot of people that play lacrosse so somebody with that experience is is welcome you know (laughs) is now <laughs> what was uh, some of the stats that you wanted to talk about or do well, we want I mean, to do that separate we can close off with him no we, we're gonna talk okay. about it in a minute but well, like what do you have anything that you want to like point out and i don't know is there what do you appreciate i guess about this opportunity it's a chance for me to become a better version of myself oh lovely mm-hmm. okay how do you feel it's changed you as a person playing sports like hmm. team sport in school we'll find out when school starts <laughs> yeah um have a lot of people been surprised at the fact that 
they've heard or they know now that you're like on the football team when i first brought it up to some of the kids last year last school year uh that i was going to be trying out for the football team they looked at me like with like shock like oh really and like i didn't think they i that i was like gonna stay with it or that i was gonna make it um but i'm still here right so i like and you made it all summer where yeah. there's been a couple kids on the team who haven't been there for everything they've yeah. shown up a couple times and so far what are the positions that you've enjoyed playing or what side of the ball have you enjoyed playing more I offense really, or defense i really like playing defense you really enjoy defense mm-hmm. is there a specific uh, position so far in defense that calls out to you the most linebacker linebacker uh, inside out or it doesn't matter just um, as long as it's a linebacker i i think outside more. yeah outside linebacker more um i've done inside i'm not as great as it it doesn't feel as comfortable as outside linebacker does mm. what do you what makes it comfortable i don't understand it just feels right like, it's just it those just spots feels it just feels comfortable know. yeah okay. your assignment your job when the way they have you it. when they've had you run um offense mm-hmm. what's your preferred position uh I, I like running back running back on offense i like running back um Run, yeah, running, running back. back. Yeah, I've seen you run that a couple of times. You, you do pretty receiving good. running back. Yeah, like yeah. third down he specialist. Well. I think you do well. All right. You okay. Like your cool. Cool. Too. Cool. Cool. Well, I was kind of raising him to be a quarterback as a kid, and I was like, like little seeds I threw in there and teaching them and why don't you try want to, to be work with him? I do. Um, you do now. You no, told us I've you didn't want to be, be quarterback. quarterback, but my shoulder, like oh. every, I can't throw, and if I do. It always gets that clink that it always like. And you got that clunks. messed up in jujitsu. Yeah, in jujitsu, I popped my shoulder out a little, and then I went and I popped it back in. But like, it's just it never. now permanently just goes clink, yeah. clink, clink. This has never been that. We just need to strengthen that shoulder girdle. Yeah. Right. We've talked about that before. I've been sending you lots of exercises. So there was something you wanted to cover though. So when we were talking about schools, when we were talking about uh, the sports and the funding, so. As we mentioned, we had this uh, past weekend. There was an event. It was the last. We call it a seven. On, they call it a seven on seven, which is seven players on seven players, obviously. Um, plus schools the big get men to, challenge. Yeah, uh, plus big man challenge, which is all, all the offensive linemen or defensive linemen playing up against each other, doing tug of war and sprints or running or trying to get the quarterback or blocking. Man on man tackle. Man, yeah. So, um, and, you know, offense going up against each other in basic defense. And it's been interesting, and you know they we the kids played with a certain schools for a while. Um, but as we said, there were schools that we went to where they had beautiful big fields, beautiful big stadiums, um, artificial brand new top of the line uh, weight rooms, uh, light lighting systems. Uh, yeah. Fields are you know artificial, yeah, yeah artificial turf, uh, really nice, almost almost kind of like a college stadium. Uh, and then you get to the school where our kids go to, and it's a normal grass football field, which I don't mind. I prefer uh, grass fields. Uh, artificial turf are usually end up in more injuries, and they're really hard and really, really hot. Um, but, you know, we have those generator lights. Our stands are probably getting there. Uh, it's not as fancy as the other ones. And uh, uh, there's a lot of uh, parent involvement, uh, parents trying to help out, parents uh, trying to raise money for the school. Uh, you guys have a fundraiser going on for a student, for a per athlete, for player. Uh, we'll be posting the link on the website and probably on our social media ones for anybody that would like to support and help out. So uh, most public schools get state funding and they get a good amount of money. And imagine it's part of the reason why they have their fields and their teams look the way that they do. The uniforms, the gear, the gyms, the stadium, the field, everything's top of the line. Fancy water lines and shades and everything. And we're carrying little pop-up tents and taking water coolers from the parents with ice and trying to make the kids some Gatorades and funding, uh, donating it's all family, Gatorades. Yeah. Uh, on this last one, we the school hosted, and we had parents help out, 
and cook out and bring in food, burger patties and chips and everything for yeah, snacks. Yeah, kind of like a fundraising snack. Bar. Yeah, and whatever was sold, uh, all the profits obviously were going towards the football team. So as parents, we donated our time. There's been a dad that's been very involved also who made sure during uh, the early uh, during summer Hell season. Week. Not Hell Week anymore, please. Let's be, let's be pretty correct here. During football, um, in the main football Who camp. made <laughs> breakfast for all the, all the athletes and some of the parents, my wife, myself, uh, his wife, and another, volunteering another family time volunteering and time items. and items to help out and feed the athletes. So um, there's a lot of free time going on there that, that the parents have given up. And on top of that, we're paying for you know the equipment uh helping out to help the stadium the school make the funds and so it made me think i was like uh why why is that why is it that we don't get enough funds like the other schools so well, i asked my wife if she can look into it and let us know so i'm not going to go on a deep dive with this because we did talk about it on the previous episode just ha- with the difference between charter schools and public school systems even though that was more about the educational format and I did touch, I believe, on how the funding is not equal. So for us, I actually found the California Department of Education website. And anyone can find this link. Anyone can go in there and just click on anything they want to to find the information. Um, but I'm just going to talk numbers. Okay. So I I found the page after several different links. It's actually an Excel spreadsheet that shows for the 2024 school year Mm -hmm. what the funding was approved in June of this year for every school in California. Oh, okay. So then for this year, you find out there's a page that tells you how much money they're getting. The district. So each each school district is how much each school district is getting and how much the charter schools are in that district are getting. So I I pulled up specifically just ours. Um, I was able to find just ours. Okay. So I'm comparing that to three counties. Okay. So again. uh, Or three unified. When you guys hear charter school, I know that you automatically think about. Possibly uh, paid school. You have to pay to, for your kids to go to that school, but there are charter schools that are not like that. Yes. They are government funded, right? Okay, or well, pub- okay. There are charter schools that are paid, so those are more of the private, considered private schools. So okay. those are usually going to be. So, so the parents having to pay for the kids to go exactly. to that school. Exactly. So we've got several of those in the Temecula Valley Unified School District, right? There's, um, and most of them are non-secular so what does non-secular mean non-secular secular means that they're religious okay okay so we've got several schools that are paid Mm -hmm. so those schools usually have really nice fields and and properties because the parents are paying for it okay whereas with the tuition that they pay for the tuition they pay for the students yes and you can actually get scholarships to go to these schools if you're a really good athlete or really good academic uh, student. So okay. um, our school is not one of those private charter schools. Ours is a free choice uh, or public charter school, which means anyone can get on the lottery to attend the school. You don't have to pay to go there. It's just a lottery system if you get accepted into the school or not. Why is it uh, called free choice? Because it doesn't matter where you live, you can uh. go to the school. Okay. So like, yeah. So we don't have to live within the school's boundary. You don't have to, yeah. You don't have to live in is. that school district. Or yeah. Okay. Exactly. So I just pulled up our particular school, and then uh, Temecula Valley Unified, San Diego Unified, and San Bernardino City Unified uh, to show the difference of funding in the state of California for each of these regions right right so san bernardino unified receives 562 million dollars a year damn for that was approved for this year for for the 562 million million say, that's a shitload of money for a city or a county that well, just wait. filed for bankruptcy just a couple wait, years ago no, no, yeah. this is from the state this is not city funded this is state the state of california is giving san bernardino unified yeah San Diego is receiving three hundred and six million. Okay. Temecula is only getting a hundred and sixty-four million. 
How the hell is San Bernardino getting more than everybody else? Because there is a form, there is a spreadsheet, and again, you can find all this on the California Department of Education website. There are forms that the schools have to fill out every year that discuss if the parents are in jail, how many students are special needs, how many students are homeless, how many students are Hispanic, how many are Filipino, how many are black. So it asks for all these different uh, criteria. Holy crap, dude. And based on the information provided by the school or the district, To the state of California, ticking off all those boxes gives funding to the school. So then most definitely San Diego should be higher, right? You're saying San Diego is 100 and what? San Diego gets, I got to go back to that page. San Diego gets 306 million. 306 million. It's so overpopulated. It's so (laughs) expensive to live there. Uh, there's so many single parents. There's so many freaking Hispanics. There's so many. Yeah, but but people in jail it's still not considered less privileged than San Bernardino <sighs> County. And this is for the whole well, yeah, uh, San, San Bernardino, Bernardino Cal- City. It's not the county. This is San Bernardino City Unified, San Diego City Unified, and Temecula Valley Unified. Well, yeah, when you think Temecula, you think of the wineries and rich, rich white, white people. people. Yeah, so they only get, Temecula only gets $164 million. It's <laughs> the fact that you guys just said that at the same time. <laughs> it's $164 million for Temecula. San Diego gets $306 million. San Bernardino gets $562 million. Okay, but get this. Of all that money, and it has his to be split. school, his school, no, no, no. That's how much the unified district gets. Right. One's, okay, so for Temecula Valley, $164 million. His school gets $6 million. Okay. That's it. A year. For the school year, for this current school year, his school gets six million of the hundred and sixty-four. And out of that, that covers, I imagine, the teachers. That covers salaries for special education. Eighty-five thousand of that six million is allocated to mental special um, special education mental services. One hundred and seventy-four thousand is only given to expanded learning programs. Whereas San Bernardino gets fifty seven million and San Diego gets forty seven million and Temeco gets six million for expanded learning opportunities. Man, our tax money at work right there. And then his school only gets a hundred and thirty three thousand dollars for arts and music. Whereas San Bernardino gets seven million. San Diego oh, gets fourteen million in San Diego for arts and music. How much do we get? A hundred and thirty three thousand. And what about sports? And Temecula gets three million. What about but sports? There is no sports allocation on here. So I then, think sports falls under the um, expanded I, learning. So that's divided through the whole Temecula, so no, all those no. schools. One seventy four. Oh, for is this school, just for this school. school. I'm sorry, yeah, this school. just his school. So that has to cover the track and soccer and basketball. One hundred seventy four thousand. Yes, I know, it's and that's nothing. got to cover everything. Yes. So that and that's why the stadium looks like it does. That's okay, why. Yeah. Whereas Temecula not, Valley. I mean, they have the safety equipment, but they don't have. Yeah, I mean, all right. So the Temecula Valley for expanded learning gets six million. So that's why the public high schools have the nice Wait, so po- they get that much and... Yes. The Temecula Valley. All of Temecula but why, Valley. Why wouldn't why wouldn't this school get the same thing? Because it's a charter and it's not part of so the then full it's kind of like saying it's kind of, oh my goodness. It's kind of like saying uh, charter sounds white so you don't get enough money but... Uh, public it's, sounds if you minority, look, so you get more money. So if you, you go, get Section 8. If your school population doesn't tick off all these boxes, then you don't get the fund. You don't get extra funding. Wait, so like if it even says one person's parents in jail, then that, they get the tick? They are, Okay, so <laughs> even one person will automatically increase the funding. <laughs> oh, 
I know, <laughs> we need right? to start like, <laughs> like my parents. We need to tell the are parents. Divorced. My dad left us. <laughs> We need uh, to start telling the. We need to start telling all the parents to lie on their reports. Yeah. And, and there's actually a questionnaire. There's surveys that go out every year. Now that I'm, you know, understanding, I read through this. There's so much more information on there. There's even. Um, <laughs> You'd be like, that's my stepdad. That's why he talks to me like that. <laughs> there's even uh, charters. Charters also He's so get mean funded. to me. Charters also get funded in lieu of property tax. So whatever their property tax is. It's like one sixth of whatever their property tax. Oh gets. my god, dude! I'm yeah. so like, I'm so amazed by this. So th- I'm so sorry that we put you in the school in where your education <laughs> is so good that you guys don't get any funding from the state for. Uh, that's pretty much all our school is. It's just academics. Yeah. Yeah. Every well, other school is sports. Our school is academics. Well, because ultimately, and and this is not to knock on sports in any way because you and i both are you and i both went to public school systems i think we turned out fine but (laughs) ultimately ultimately sports sports is a way to get a scholarship so the bigger the sports programs in are in difference in the public school system the better chances a kid could get a scholarship to a university for playing a sport yeah but at the same time sports is also an outlet to not be like in a gang yeah. or in drugs or That's being true. a dealer or you know doing crime so it, it, I, I can also see part of that like if we have enough for a sports or music program it's going to keep these kids off the street right but but we're not in a school where that's a problem right do you understand so yeah the, because the, apparent apparently we're privileged we're the, privileged and so the then parents, you're privileged you don't need extra funding I, that's that's how i'm taking well, it well and, and that's the thing so the parents who are choosing this school are choosing it for its academic structure right because it's stricter because it's more rigorous because they have to wear uniforms automatically that changes the mentality and there's no uh tolerance for certain behaviors right where in the other schools, like you had said, like the teachers don't care. So, uh, they really don't. so everything that I said on the previous episode is pretty accurate, right? Which part? Like, remember, I was making the argument about you can't be too strict with the kids because then you know you get them, you get them kicked out, and you lose students, you lose funding. Yes, that's when we were talking about the whole "no kid gets left behind" mentality, right? right. And I actually went down the rabbit. I read way more about this stuff that I'm not going to go into right now. Um, but I will post links on the episode notes about all this stuff where you can, you know, deep dive into it if you'd like. But ultimately, we have chosen to put our kid in a school because of the way they run their program at that school. The people who are choosing to put their kids in this school don't meet the boxes that would give the school more funding. So we, if they were started asking the parents to pay, then that'd be different. It would change everything right. automatically. But that's not what they're I mean. But they pretty much are because, like, like for <laughs> example, the, the football, yeah. right? But or. I think I think that with that, I think a lot of people. So when they think charter school, they're thinking the whole privilege thing. Yeah, but it's not oh, they true. Do. But it's not true. Like it's just that a lot of parents at the school are not rich. Like we're definitely not rich, and we're scraping, you know, to make things happen. But I think automatically people. Oh, think, definitely, yeah. I don't have the money to help out as much as I would love to, right? Yeah. And, I, like and my son's parents, part of the team. I want to be. I want to help out the team. We yeah. want, we want to help out the team. Yeah. So we don't have that much money, but you know what we got? Like we'll give you some of our time. Yeah. Our time is also you know valuable. We still have another three kids that yeah. we have to be a and part jobs. of, right? Yeah. But we can, if we can help out with time, then we do it. And like I said, like I spent all saturday on the grill helping out you helped out on the stand and so did all those other moms and all those other dads right yeah we show up to the games we put up shades hey here's some water guys hey here's some stuff for your guys's breakfast or who needs to ride to the next scrimmage or do you guys appreciate that like do the guys talk about that at all um like saturday we're like man look at the parents and they're like Oh yeah, they can't. They can't really watch the games because they're just doing it. Like, it's so nice, like, cause no one else is doing it. Cause it's it's just the three to four families that are always helping out. Yeah. So it's like, they like we really appreciate it, especially 
like um those the new guys they like they appreciate it but like not as much as the guys who have experienced it before mm-hmm. cause it is a small school they're like oh it's it's uh we take what we can get and we like learn to live with it and we're very thankful for it and yeah and you guys have a fundraiser going on right now yeah so yeah and i know so you have a fundraiser right Mom, your mom's bringing it up so we, can you tell us a little bit about this fundraiser going on it's um it's for gear and trips and uh the buses the, yeah the buses for all to make to the, to the next for games, the games. Yeah, to, to, for it's all for the next games so you guys also have to sure. pay for buses yeah so and they get the charter thing. buses yeah yeah so pay. there's no school buses there's mm-hmm. no, pul- no no yellow buses you guys have to rent a bus mm-hmm. so then you guys are trying to raise money now uh how much is uh we you got like what we were saying what 24 kids right now yeah, about twenty four kids. Twenty four kids, and how much is expected for each kid to uh, be raised? I think five hundred. So you guys are trying to get five hundred per kid. Yeah, I know we we've been on there, and we you can see what each kid is getting. There's a lot of kids who have gotten no donations, right? And yeah. there's a couple that have gotten a dollar, but yeah. even a dollar is welcome. Yeah. Um. I know that uh, on the subject that what you were you what mom was saying, um, I approached some of my coworkers and I said, "Hey, my son's football team is doing a um, kind of like a fundraiser. If you got or a donation set, uh, drive, if you guys could, you know, are, are interested in donating towards the football team, um, anything is appreciated. Five dollars, you know, whatever you guys can, like." You know, I will thank we'll be thankful and we appreciate it to help these kids do, you know, and get what they need for their football season. And that's uh, out of a group of the guys that I told at the same time, the first answer was like, well, I thought your kid was in the charter school. Like, why do you need to do this fundraiser? Why do you need donations? It's a, it's a charter school. I was like, well, no, it's not your typical charter school. It's, it's not, not a paid charter yeah, school. Yeah, it's not a paid charter school. You know, they, they get the funds for the education and everything, but not for the extracurricular stuff. And they're like, well, my sibling went to a charter school and my parents never had to pay for anything uh, except for you know, them to go there. The tuition, but we don't pay for a tuition. Yeah, exactly. So I, I try to explain it to people, but, you know, they hear charter school, they're like, they no. They automatically think. So yeah. then <laughs> the moment that I, uh, th- those people that think like that are the ones that, they didn't want to help out. They didn't yeah, contribute. I, and I, I think that's just in general. Like even people I've talked to, it's they, there's just really this misconception that every charter or every prep is paid, and it's not. And clearly, based on the numbers I found right. for for this current school year, our school gets crap. Yeah, and, and you know, it was like, oh, uh, I just want to take the time right now to say thank you. I don't know if they'll ever hear this, but the guys that actually did. Uh, were quick about it. They didn't even think about it. Um, I don't have family, <laughs> extended family, to reach out and ask for help. So I apologize for that for you, my son. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I do have a few people that I do consider uh, my friends. They might, I might not be their friend, but to me, they're my friends and they're my family. So I reached out to the ones that I feel that I'm closer to, and I'm glad to say that at least half of them have donated something towards the team. So. Um, that's all I can give you and offer you, bud. Uh, and uh, other you know, than our time and yeah. all the food donations you guys need, right? Thank yeah, you very yeah. Much. We might not eat at home, but you guys will eat. <laughs> You'll eat at school. <laughs> uh, so, so yeah, guys, whoever you know who who you are, uh, thank you for helping out my son and and the, and the school to yes, you know, meet thank that you goal. Very much. Thank you. Yeah, and if you would like to help out. Yeah, if you've made it this far, thank you for, so much for listening to us. We appreciate your time very much. And I will be posting a link if you'd like to help fund our son's sports team. Because, again, our, the state of California does not fund us. And it is not a paid school where we do not pay a tuition for him to go there. So we are the school is in need of some yeah. some help to keep this program growing because actually it's a very new program it's yeah like only even four a dollar years old. Yeah. yeah even a dollar and Every, if and if you don't like uh, us and our son there's other kids there that have yeah. nobody so you um, can pick one of the other kids yes. you know if you like uh, to fund one of the other kids yes um so again 
Or if you know Thank someone, you. you know, please share it. Somebody that loves sports or, you know, you may have a rich family member that's looking for a tax write-off. You know, oh, yeah. please, please use, sure. use the school as a, <laughs> as a, as a donation center. Uh, it will be greatly appreciated. If you're a clothing line and, you know, you have some sports gear and some <laughs> shoes and, you know, I'm sure well, these guys would like- love that. Some spirit apparel. Like, yeah, yeah. We're looking for some spirit apparel. That'd be great. <laughs> um, so thank you guys very much for your time. We appreciate you. And and I uh, would like to say thank you to our son for joining us and finally doing one-on-one with us. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he was very quiet. <laughs> yeah. It was a weird recording. I know. I think we would have talked awkward. about Star Wars. Though, right? We did more, more conversation. That is good. It's a sports subject today. Okay. Yeah. Good, good, good. Well, whenever you want to come back, you know, feel free. You're always, you know, I mean, you're only a few steps away, so it's just be <laughs> like. Hey, and we like wish you luck but... um, in your continued practice until school starts, because it's around the corner. Uh, until next time. Good night. Good night. <laughs>